All right, guys. Well, we are here at Creation and Compost for another wonderful podcast session. I've got a really awesome, amazing, tremendous, spectacular. I can't think of any other adjectives to describe this guy and the heart that he has for serving other people, but most importantly, for serving Jesus Christ. I've got Jeff Hughes with me. Jeff, how's everything going? Everything's good, man. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, bud. Well, listen, I just want to share real quick where you and I started in terms of our relationship. So it's 2008, yep. if I'm not mistaken. I just finished up my first year at Loganville Middle School. Had no clue why God had sent me to Loganville, Georgia, of all places. I still remember the commercial, where's Loganville? Um, and um, <laughs> I remember seeing that. And I was like, why am I here? But anyways, at a wonderful, wonderful school, a lot of great people. And I met this young man who was one of my new sixth grade students, and he was just a super guy, a gentleman by the name of Connor Hughes. I think you know him. And, um, and, <laughs> and then I got to know you as the school year led on. We were meeting and discussing some different things, and um, there was a friendship that I was began there. Parent. <laughs> well, you were. You were definitely an involved parent, and you were somebody who was very involved in the community. And you were very concerned about, um, you know, the well-being of not just your children, but, you know, of, of all of those that you had an opportunity to influence. And, um, and then I had an opportunity a couple years later uh, to be able to work with Caroline, with your daughter, and uh, as she was on our softball team. And, of course, she taught me more softball than I could ever have taught her. Uh, tremendous athlete in a lot of ways. Both of them were great young people. And um, so that's where our relationship began about 14 years ago. And on and off, we've kind of kept in touch as uh, we've relocated, but you've stayed grounded right there in that Loganville area, but you've had a lot of changes that have gone on. So I guess what I'd like to do is to start off by um, kind of having you introduce yourself in terms of you and your family um, and just kind of your roots there. And then we'll kind of proceed and see, you know, kind of where God has led you here in the last uh, couple of years. Well, first of all, I want to say, uh, yeah, I know when I first met you, uh, with Connor, I, I learned that we had something in common with baseball, um, so that was always a good thing that we had that in common. But, but yeah, um, yeah. So my wife and I, um, we've been married for almost thirty years, um, and uh, you know when we got married, we we were kind of trying to decide where we were going to plant our roots. Uh, I was from Swanee area. I went to North Gwinnett High School. And she was from south of the airport. Uh, in Morrow, Forest Park area. And um, so we knew we wanted to raise our family in one place, see them go through, you know, one school uh, system. And, and um, so, um, you know, we met with our real estate agents and, and we went to different places. But, um, you know, uh, Loganville uh, was the place that we, you know, we ended up deciding on and we built a house here and we've been in our house, gosh, you know, almost all the years that we've been married. And, um, you know, we've got, like you said, two kids, Connor and Caroline, and we were blessed to, uh, you know, put them through the Loganville school system. And, um, uh, you know, they, they got to experience one, you know, one hometown and, um, you know, we didn't move them around. And, um, you know, we were so blessed, you know, Loganville is a great town, a great place, a great school system, uh, great sports. Um, you know, they, they got to, experience a lot of cool things and um i think it, you know, it kind of helped develop them for you know the next level of life so you know we're we're real excited to be uh you know Loganville uh folks and um you know um at this point now we're empty nesters uh you know caroline's getting married in uh in may connor's been out of the house for a little while and um uh we have this sabrina and i and our dog <laughs> so um <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're enjoying that now. We're enjoying the new phase. Um. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, like I said, you know, since I first met you, obviously, I know a lot of things have changed. You go from having, uh, you know, Connor being just a little sixth grader, just starting middle school, to now he's, yep. uh, he's coaching baseball. And Caroline, of course, yep. is playing, has been playing college ball. And um, they both, uh, they're both adulting now. That's just crazy to think yeah. that they're, it's yeah. just crazy to think that they're adults. So, um, yeah. the but, at Monroe Area High School, just down the road, you know, in Walton County. So, yeah. yeah. 
Well, it's neat to see you guys. Y'all are still involved, but it is a little bit odd when I see pictures and I don't see that Loganville L on either one of you. So um, yeah. I kind of I kind of have to do double takes. But anyways, but yeah, Loganville is a wonderful community. Uh, I had an opportunity to teach there for nine years. I helped break in the new middle school. Uh, I was there for the first year, and then God mm -hmm. moved me over to Barrow County, and then out of the state, and then out of another state. So, um, yeah. but nonetheless, Loganville is definitely a place that I look at with a lot of fond memories, and uh, definitely a wonderful atmosphere for that community. So, um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about the work that you've been doing uh, up until the last couple of years, just kind of where you yeah. were in your career, and then some of the recent changes that you saw. Um, as we've kind of discussed off camera. Yeah, so uh, I think I'm going to start with, you know, I got to go to Barry College. It was a great experience in Rome. And, um, you know, uh, I initially thought I wanted to be a teacher and, and coach and uh, majored in physical education for a year. Um, and I just, I, I decided uh, sophomore year to change my major and I went into business. And, um, you know, looking back, I was young, but I, I thought, you know, I need to go into business. If I'm, I'm going to have a family one day and I want to be able to support them and, you know, be a, be a good husband and a good father from a financial standpoint. But um, so I majored in business and, um, you know, uh, fortunately got a real job uh, once I got out of school. And I spent about 25 years, give or take a few, um, in the financial services industry. Um, and I got to meet some incredible leaders uh, in that business that, that helped polish and shape me. Um, some, some heroes that I still have uh, in life today that I learned in that business. And, um, and then in 2015, um, you know, I don't, I was, I was kind of getting a little bit burned out to be honest with you. I, I was driving to Atlanta every day and, you know, I'd get up real early and try to beat rush hour. And then I'd stay at the office a little bit late to let rush hour die down and, um, you know, it was just, it was kind of starting to wear on me. Connor was a senior and I was, I remember racing from Atlanta to get to Loganville to watch his high school baseball games his senior year and to be there and to be there. I always like to get there a little bit early and, you know, watch BP and that kind of stuff. And, um, and I was just kind of getting a little bit burned out and, um, I had a good friend here in Loganville who I had been watching her. I actually coached her son when he was younger in basketball and she was my team mom and we just stayed close and, um, I called her out of the blue. I, I was kind of, I was kind of searching, uh, I guess at that time. And, you know, I was praying about what God wanted me to do. And uh, it was kind of ironic because I'm going to share a little bit more, but as I talked, but, um, you know, I think maybe that was kind of the beginning, uh, but, um, I had lunch with her and, um, you know, she had started her business here in Loganville and I watched her kind of, kind of, you know, uh, grow it from really, really small to seeing some things happen and, and so I made a change and, and started working with my, my good friend, Beverly Malone Harrison here in Loganville. We, we had a property management business. She started, um, and Beverly's just an awesome person. I, I could talk about her for a while, but, you know, she was, she became a mentor and a good friend. And, and um, you know, we, we were able to really grow our business from working in out of a small house in Loganville to, you know, we, we, we built a new office. We, we had a small staff, uh, I don't know, seven or 10 people at one time to, I think, 60 plus employees in five offices in the metro Atlanta area. We were, we, we were doing really, really well. Um, so I spent about five years doing that. Um, and I, looking back, I, I kind of worked my whole career to get to the, sort of that point. Uh, I was professionally, I, I like to say I was at the top of my game. I was, I was making really good money. I was in a comfortable place. Uh, I was 11, 12 minutes from my house commute wise. Uh, I could be home at 5, 5.30 if I wanted to be. Um, I had autonomy. I had flexibility. All the things you want in a career and, and a great mentor and a leader in Beverly and a um, visionary, so to speak. And um, February 8th of 2020, I think it was February 8th, um, unfortunately, Beverly had a heart attack and, and died uh, unexpectedly on a Sunday afternoon. And um, that kind of started... Uh, the ball rolling, I guess, um, when that happened, um, you know, it was a big blow and, um, you know, I'd have, I've lost friends and family and, and I don't know, it was just something about where I was, I guess, in my life. And, you know, I, I spent every day next to her office and, and you know, um, 
uh, you know, she was she was here one day and gone the next. And um, she was getting ready to retire. She was 59. And, um, you know, she had become very successful and, and she was going to transition uh, the business over to us. And, um, you know, that that happened. And um, fast forward a, a few weeks and the pandemic hits. And, and so we're, we're all we're dealing with the loss of our president. And the founder of our company and my mentor and friend and um then this pandemic hits and we're you know we're all working re remotely and and um you know i had a little more quiet time on my hands um and uh i i just i go on walks during the day get my exercise or, or runs or whatever and um i have my quiet time and i could feel the lord's presence and and i just started feeling like he was trying to get my attention and um you know that beverly's passing you know, was maybe the trigger point of that. And um, my wife uh, picked up on it. And um, over lunch one day or dinner, she said, Jeff, what's going on? And I, I just shared with her, you know, I didn't know if I was doing what the Lord wanted me to be doing. And um, that, that maybe maybe he had a different plan for me. And um, to be honest with you, I, 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 I did just kind of realized while I was probably successful business-wise, I'd like to think, uh, I just wasn't fulfilled. Um, and um, I felt like, you know, I, I spent all these years sharpening my skills and, and I kind of know now what I'm good at, you know, and what my strengths and weaknesses are and um, that I needed to be using them. And um, so she, she looked at me right in the eyes and she said, Matt, she said, uh, if you could do anything you wanted to do and money wasn't an issue, what would you do? And I looked at her and I said, really? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, you know, I've always enjoyed coaching and working with young people and leading and being a mentor and encourager. Um, and I feel like those are my strengths. And she looked at me and she said, you need to figure out what that is and you need to do that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? And she said, yeah, you have my blessing. And uh, so for your wife to tell you that, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. It's a pretty powerful moment, you know, Amen. and um, so I just began to pray to God specifically about, you know, okay, if you want me to do something different, if you have a different plan for me, I'm in a comfort zone. I'm willing to get out of it. Um, I'm willing to listen to you. And, um, you know, I look back to my freshman year in college and you know, I told you coaching and teaching, I kind of thought was the direction I was going to go. And I changed for, <laughs> you know, I changed not necessarily from the heart, but from the mind, you know. And looking back professionally, I, I kind of followed what I thought was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And there were times when I changed and did things, you know, and I prayed and I felt like God was, you know, made things happen. I know God put Beverly in my life and made that opportunity happen. But, um, you know, uh, if, if I had to be honest, I probably wasn't fully following the Lord with what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. There were other times in my life over the last 25 or plus years where opportunities to do something in ministry or, or working from this standpoint um, came up and I just said, I'm, I don't know, I'm not good enough for that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, but at this point at 54 years old, um, you know, culmination of all these life experiences I had, I, I, I said, you know what? Um, kind of like David, you know, he slew the lion and the bear and I've had some lions and bears and God saw me through those, those battles. And so I was like, you know, I'm, I'll get out of the comfort zone. I want. I want to. Um, I want. I want you to lead me. And mm -hmm. so, uh, fast forward a little bit. Uh, October, I'm at a, a retreat at Berry College of all places with FCA. FCA is an organization that I've supported and been part of since about 2009. Uh, I've got a couple of friends with FCA that I've tried to, you know, help and encourage and support and volunteer and serve with and. So they were great role models for me, and uh, Sabrina and I were up at Barry for an FCA coach's uh, husband and wife retreat, marriage retreat. And at lunch, my buddy Mike asked me, Jeff, you ever thought of working with FCA, those are Christian athletes? And I looked at him and I said, nothing would make me happier, Mike. What do we need to do to make that happen? And uh, I didn't hesitate um, looking back. Um, so uh, he came and met me in Loganville and we had lunch, started a dialogue and um, started having a conversation and um, I ended up connecting with April McClendon here in Loganville, who's the, the director for, with FCA here in Walton County. And I met with her and would you believe she said that she'd been praying that God would send her someone. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so uh, there's a whole lot more to the story, but it was about a two year process. Um, I made the decision um, that I was going to leave my career and um, I was going to go to work with FCA, which was you know, totally different than anything I'd ever done, really. Um, part of that is you know, you've got you've to gotta develop a budget and you've got to um, build your, your support through, through individual donors or supporters who help you financially. It's almost like you're going out in the mission field. Mm-hmm. It's just, I'm not leaving the country. I'm, I'm my mission field is, is, um, really schools, uh, coaches and athletes, um, is what we do, who we work with, with FCA. But, um, you know, so I, I, I made the decision. Uh, I sat down with the leadership team of my company and presented a game plan to sort of transition. I prayed that they would give me their blessing. And, and, um, it was so cool because Matt, they, they responded almost identically to what I had prayed that they would. And, and they said, they said, um, this is what you should be doing and you have our blessing. And not only that, but, but my company is one of my biggest supporters financially towards my, awesome. my budget. So, um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And, and, you know, they told me I could come back whenever I wanted to, if I wanted to, you know, and, and, and uh, which was nice, but, but, um, Anyway, January uh, 7th uh, was my last day with my company, and I started with the Fellowship for Christian Athletes on January 10th. I don't, I don't mean to tell a long story, but, um, but, but that's kind of the short version of <laughs> a lot of prayer and a lot of process and a lot of, um, you know, um, seeking counsel and, and uh, feedback from folks that I, I trust and I, 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 that know me the best. But I'm sitting here today. Um, you know, uh, with a new life. And um, I read something, um, or I heard something on a podcast, something like this, um, and the speaker said, uh, in order to be fully fulfilled, you've got to follow, fully follow God. And um, I could sit here and tell you that that I really feel fully fulfilled <laughs> because I know the Lord is leading me and um, you know, on a daily basis. I couldn't do what I'm doing without, you know, without his help. Um, That's right. So that's where I'm at today, man. Well, I appreciate it. And listen, you feel, like we said before, if you feel the need to share the long or short version, uh, <laughs> we're, we're here to listen to it because, you know, when I first met you, I didn't, you know, I, I knew roughly what you did. I knew you were in the business world. Um, I yeah. could definitely tell you were committed not just to that, but most importantly to Christ, to your family. And I feel so bad that I never even mentioned Sabrina's name at the beginning because, <laughs> um, you know, as you mentioned, I mean, she, you know, it's been many years since I've had a chance to see her, but what a wonderful support that you have right there as your other really? half. And yeah. um, like you mentioned, when when you started feeling the presence of the Lord and kind of leading you into some uncharted territory, so to speak, Having that blessing from your wife, I can speak yeah. firsthand to that as well with, with my wife. There's no greater feeling because we are called to, um, to lead our families to the best of our ability, first and foremost spiritually. But as men, we're naturally drawn to we want to provide financially. We want to make sure they have a good life. We want to make sure that they're taken care of. And, you know, not to make this about me, but I'll just kind of, you know, let you know that the calling that you've answered when God started speaking to my heart, it was actually back in 2009 at the end of the year that I taught Connor. So the way that I approached science for that year, when God started speaking to my heart about the message of creation, even being in a public school, the way, I, the way that I taught science to sixth grade earth science students, it drastically changed from August until May of that year. So when God put uh, David Van Wye the second, who's actually going to be one of our guests in the next few weeks, when he put him in our church and he challenged me with that message, if I could go back and survey those students and make it a reliable survey, I'm sure they would tell you, we saw a different version of our teacher where he started talking, started questioning things more. He wasn't yeah. just giving us information and my wife was a big support with that too. And then over the last 13 or you know, 12 or 13 years, I've had to be very, very patient, which is hard for me. And, yeah. um, and, and I can tell like, you know, just listening to your story, you know, it was something he put into your life for a long time, but within the last yeah. couple of years, it seems like he's, he's definitely elevated that in terms of you trusting him. Now, yeah. before I ask you this next question, I want you to know 
that there's a reason that I left this little device back here in the pick. Okay, I was wondering about yeah, that. <laughs> I, there, there's a reason I left that. Now, this is this this is my mother-in-law's office I'm using for this. Okay. But the reason that I left this here is because my next question is gonna is gonna really focus on transitions. And right. it actually is kind of a foreshadowing of what you and I've talked about a little bit, but I already have some experience in this regard. So what I want to do is I want to let you answer, and then I'm going to use this little prop back here okay. as something that I want to follow up with. So what are some transitions that you've had to make in terms of switching over your career to something where you had, you know, a growing business that you felt like you were at the peak and then you stepped out on faith, you had a good foundation, but you were still kind of like, you know, based on what we've talked about, God, I'm putting this in your hands, but what are some transitions that you've had to make just kind of across the board? Well, there's a lot. That's a good question. Um, so uh, the first one probably was just to get out of my comfort zone, you know, because um, because I was in a place where I, I felt like I, or at least a business that I could probably retire from, you know, if I wanted to. Um, I've had some people tell me, I had somebody tell me recently, and he was not much different in, in age than myself, but he's like, I'm just kind of hanging on until I can retire. Mm -hmm. I was just like, that's not where I want to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know? But um, so I had to, to kind of get the idea of getting out of the comfort zone. Um, schedule oriented, my wife will tell you, I'm, she can tell you where I'm at any kind of given the time of the day, um, you know, because I'm, I'm just very, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a habit type person, you know, and, um, but um, then another big thing was, um, you know, uh, you talked about being a good husband and, and, you know, providing financially and, you know, Sabrina encouraged me and she said, you've always done that. And, um, but, you know, you're taught to work hard and not ask anybody for anything. And, um, and in the ministry with FCA anyway, um, to be approved to be on staff full time, you have to submit a budget of your expenses and what they're going to be. Um, and then you've got to be what they call fully funded. So you've got to have you know, individuals or even businesses that, that help you fund your budget. Um, now I never asked anybody to give me money, Matt, you know? Um, yeah. So I had to kind of get my head around that. Fortunately, FCA has some excellent training. FCA is just, it's just a championship organization from the president all the way down, I have learned. Um, and um, they provided some really good training, some biblical-based training. Uh, I spent 40 or 50 hours doing some Bible study on this topic. And then I spent three days in uh, Kansas City with the headquarters on this topic. So they equipped me and prepared me and helped me understand um, the biblical basis behind you know, funding of a, a, a ministry, um, and that um, it's okay to ask, um, you know, for support. So, um, and I knew that this is what God wanted me to do. So I, I quickly uh, got out of that uh, fear, if you will, of asking people to, to help me. And basically, I just started sitting down with people and telling them my story. Um, and uh, those were some of the closest friends, you know, initially closest friends that I have. And their reaction encouraged me. Um, and um, you know, I remember I called one of, one of the first people I called was one of my former players, to be honest with you, a guy named Matthew Jones. Matthew was a baseball player that I coached when he was 13. And um, uh, he grew to be 6'6 six, six and 300 plus pounds. Wow. Also a very smart guy. Um, and he was so smart that he got to go to Harvard. And he played offensive tackle on the Harvard football team for four years. And um, then he graduated and uh, had a nice degree. Um, and I think in finance, if I remember correctly. And Matthew is in New York now working. Um, and I call Matthew because we stay in touch. So I stay in touch with a lot of my players, um, you know, that I've coached over the years. And I told him, I said, Matthew, I just wanted you to be one of the first people to know. Because Matthew and I had a connection with FCA for what I'm going to be doing. And his immediate response was, I want to help you, coach. What can I do to help you? I said, Matthew, I didn't, I didn't call and ask you for no help. I just wanted to tell you what I'm doing. And he said, no, I, I want to help you. And I can help you. And doggone it, if, if Matthew Jones, 22-year-old kid or however old he is, you know, he's not a kid, but um, he could squash me because he's a big boy. But uh, 
you know, set up a 200 a month contribution towards my, help me towards my, and he was, I think the second guy who who did that. Um, So I got out of that comfort zone. Um, Other transitions, um, I don't know, confidence that, that, uh, you know, that I'm I'm worthy, if you will, or I'm good enough to, to kind of share my faith, um, my relationship with the Lord. I mean, I, I was, when I was younger, when I was an athlete, Matt, I, I tried to walk the walk and I necessarily, I was kind of a, well, Sabrina is, is the extrovert in our family. <laughs> she, she can sell anything to anybody and, and she's really, really good. She's, she's unbelievable at what she does in business. And uh, she is a superstar. And, uh, you know, we go, we go somewhere where we don't know a lot of people and I'm, I'm just quiet and reserved and she'll meet everybody in the room. You know, she'll know something about everybody within 15 minutes. Somebody gets on the elevator you know, and I'm like, don't do it, don't do it. And she starts a conversation. And by the time we're down to the first floor, we, we know that person's life story. I'm not that way, you know. Yeah. Um, so um, just kind of getting out of my way. And, and, and you know, uh, I learned that um, really, um, you know, one of the keys to having a great relationship with the Lord is letting, you know, putting yourself out there where you, you can't necessarily do whatever it is you're doing without the holy spirit helping you you know that's, that's if that right. makes sense uh, another way of putting it is you know I, I have found that when i'm talking with athletes um sometimes the stuff that's coming out of my mouth i'm like well I didn't, that where did that come from you know and and i know where it came from but um i i, I there was a time where i just didn't feel like that i was good enough and it, you know I, I i've read you know moses didn't think he was good enough you know mm-hmm. and david didn't think he was good enough and all these different people, not that I'm a Moses or a David, but just kind of getting out of my way with that. Um, and there were times when I was going through the transition where, you know, the devil's probably trying to get in my ear. You're not getting enough to do that, oh, yeah. you know. And I had good people around me, though, that were encouraging me and telling me that, you know, this is what I should be doing. And, and a great wife, you know, as well. And then probably the last thing, uh, just schedule, um, you know, uh, Mixing my, my schedule is upside down from what it used to be, you know. Oh, I'm sure. Um, you know, it's it's so different. Uh, I was used to getting up, going to the office, and I was there. I had lunch at the same time usually. I mean, there were variables. There were lots of variables, but but you know, for the most part, I was in control of those variables, and they, you know, and I knew what they were going to be, and um, I knew what my calendar was going to look like for a year, and um, I knew, you know, generally I was going to be at the gym at six o'clock or whatever and um I I was eating dinner at a certain time and all that stuff and now man everything is upside down and shake shaking up and I have to keep a calendar uh, of where I'm going to be any given point of the day you know and I go to bed tired every night it's a good tired but um but but that was probably one of them too um but definitely a lot of transition you know you go from being very comfortable to you know totally changing your life and um but I was good with that. That's I wanted to be stretched. I wanted to grow. I wanted yeah. to. I wanted the Lord to uh, to to stretch me. I I, I learned. Um, I learned Matthew uh, that that life is about growing, and then giving. Um, growing leads to giving, I think, and giving, I think, leads to growing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you give, you get so much back. So I was ready for that. And at 54, I was telling somebody recently, I feel like I'm 30. I know I don't look like I'm 30, but I feel, I feel like it. I have tons of energy. and I get That's up, all that I matters is that you day. feel like and, it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I hope that's not boring for people. I don't mean to be so long-winded, but, but that's a good question. And there's been a lot of transition, bud. So. Well, the reason I left that little calculator back there is when I started thinking about answering the call to go in the ministry, I was working on my doctorate at the time and I had become so unmotivated with my topic and I just saw very little fulfillment in, you know, the, the topic that I had poured, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours into had already gotten approval to go through and do a study and I, I, I told Brianna, I said, look, I really feel like I just need to change this topic. I really think I need to focus on something that I'm passionate about. And she, you know, Brianna being the one who she's actually the introvert and I'm the one who I guess by default, I'm the extrovert. But um, but I was like, you know, I just really feel like I need to change this topic. And she said, Matt, 
think about what you've already poured into this. She said, you've put so much into this and you're going to lose two and a half years or whatever it was at that time. Go ahead and get finished. And then you can spend the rest of your life doing what it is you feel like you're called to do. In other words, go ahead and get this checked off, get it approved, get it submitted, get the doctor, you know, in front of, behind of, wherever they put it in your name and just be done with it. And then you can go right, you can go do your studies and all that other stuff. So I really had to die to my own pride in that saying, okay, I'm just going to bite this bullet and I'm going to finish this out. Well, got it finished was making more money as a teacher before I left the state of Georgia in 2017. And I don't want to make this about a prosperity gospel because so often Christians get accused of what, you know, by people who are not saved or from the outside world, you know, they'll see people, and I'm not going to call any names, but they'll see pastors and other people that are saying, well, if you follow God, he's going to give you all this and all that. I didn't care about any of that. I had worked my backside off to make a good life for my family, to prove to my in-laws and everybody else, I'm going to do the best I can to take care of your daughter, my kids, your grandkids. And yeah. it took a lot of humility on my part from 2017 to the current day. What I want people to understand is as a teacher with my primary on-campus teaching job, I make less than half of what I would be making had I stayed in the state of Georgia. And that's what I want people to understand is when I look at this calculator, I left it because I want it to be a symbolic gesture that that thing back there, I never sit and crunch numbers because all the stress, all the worry, everything that I have put into worrying about how God would provide, he has always gone above and beyond and met our needs. And that involves my wife being in anesthesia school for two and a half years, which is not cheap. But the reason that I have devoted myself to Liberty University in three different jobs on campus in Virginia is because they started giving me opportunities. And I truly believe it was because, not because Matt is this amazing, intelligent, will, um, you know, capable person. I was about to give my answer away. I think it's just because I was willing to just say, Lord, you know me, you know, I'm not the best speaker. You, you know, like Moses said, I'm not the most intelligent. I don't have the best educational credentials and all. Um, I don't have the most money, but I am willing to pour everything I have to serve you. And he's had to reveal that to me in stages. So back in 2009, fast forward 13 years, here we are today. It's taken a lot of, okay, Lord, I'm going to let you open the doors up. And each year I was making less and less money. And I'm sitting here thinking, Lord, you know, things are getting tight. Things are getting tough. You know, we doubled in kids. We got up to four kids in the house. And then Brianna decides she wants to go do anesthesia. I'm like, okay, this is just getting crazy. And then, like I said, we never did without. He always provided. He would give me other opportunities. And I don't mind working. I've been working this way since I was 20 years old before I started teaching. I don't mind working. But most importantly, Jeff, just like you, there came a time in my life kind of early on, I said, I want to be fulfilled. I don't want to be that person who's kind of running the clock out yeah. in their job. I heard teachers say the same thing. Good people that were working super hard and they were just like, you know, I've got five more years till retirement. I'm just going to wait it out. And that just breaks my heart because I know a lot of good people in education yeah who pour everything into their job and they feel like they're doing, that they are accomplishing nothing when in fact they're changing yeah. lives. But so often they look right. at it and they say, well, it's just a job. You know, I've already gotten started. I'm too deep in. And I want this podcast to be about, you know what? It's okay to say, I'm going to go a different direction. It's okay to say, yeah. you know what? Yeah. I'm not fulfilled anymore or I enjoy doing that. And I'm glad I have it as a backup, like you said with yours, but, I really want to honor Christ first and foremost with what I do. And I'm going to trust the one. If he could speak the universe into existence in six days and he could send his son to die on the cross when he could have pulled himself down, but he stayed up there. He finished the drill, as Coach Rick would have said back in the day at UGA. You know, all of that, if he can accomplish all that, if I'm willing to just take up my cross and to just, you know, trust him and say, yeah. Lord, just use me. And yeah. so I, I leave this back here as a way to represent this right here means nothing. The monetary stuff that we, we get, yes, it's important. We need that financial support, but I'm just going to trust that God 
with the passion we have for serving him, that he will take our imperfections, he'll take our shortcomings, and of course, he'll be that increase as we decrease ourselves, you know, and again, that's scriptural, so, um, but you kind of led into something that I was going to ask you about, I was, you know, you talked about uh, Matthew and the willingness he was, um, you know, in terms of contributing, what are some other maybe unexpected blessings or maybe just some other encouragements that you've had along the way Beside from Sabrina and from Matthew, what are some other things that you kind of were like, you know, we're, 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 we're going down the right road here, you know? Well, uh, first, up front, there were just unbelievable conversations um, that, you know, I said, I said, Lord, if you just want me to have these conversations and that's, that's and you're going to close the door at some point, man, I'm, I'm better for this, you know? Um, I had some conversations, you know, I, I sat down and looked at, I probably talked to close to almost 200 of my closest friends, you know, wow. and share with them my story, you know, kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and I've talked to some folks that I had lost contact with or hadn't talked to in a little while, but uh, one in particular, uh, when I was, when I was in high school, um, I worked at Chick-fil-A and I worked for Chick-fil-A for six years through high school and my first couple of years of college. And, um, um, I got to work for just a great leader, uh, and he's a giant in Chick-fil-A these day, but uh, it was a guy named Gary Geddes, and um, uh, Gary ended up uh, working uh, with Truett um, until Truett passed away. He was like, him and Truett were um, you know, working together on, on Truett's uh, property, real estate investment, that type of stuff, but um, uh, I, I've stayed, can, you know, with Gary, but but you know, I hadn't talked with him in a while. Um, and just the incredible conversation I had with him was, was just was just one that that you know of many that that stood out. But I, I could I could talk all day about the conversations. Um, you know, um, when I got I, I met my initial funding goal, so I could I could be quote unquote approved and go full time and. The last guy who did that was my best friend in life, well, one of my best friends in life. I have a bunch. <laughs> um, a guy named Bobby Shoemaker, who I've known for 30 plus years, and I met Sabrina at his house uh, on July 7th, 1988. And um, um, he called me and asked me where I was, and um, you know, with my my funding, and and I, I told him, and he said, "Well, I've just been kind of waiting. I wanted to kind of be the last guy uh, to kind of help you fill the gap." And uh, he said him and his wife had been praying and, and he just woke up and he decided what the number was going to be. Uh, the number seven is kind of an important number in our family. You know, I met my wife on the 7th of July and my son always won number seven in baseball. And that was his birthday. And uh, so we have this we have this seven seven prayer group thing that we do. Um, anyway, he says, I'm going to I'm going to give you seven hundred and seventy seven dollars a month towards your budget, you know, and and. Um, <laughs> the conversation I had that day with him was just unbelievable when he shared with me what I meant to him and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a couple things that stand out, but I got to fast forward um, and I'll share this. Um, so, you know, kind of where I'm at today, I've just been praying that, you know, I hope I'm, you know, I've only been working with FCA since January 10th. So I'm in my third month, right? And I've just kind of been planting seeds and, and trying to, strengthen the relationships I have with coaches in the community and build new ones with those that I don't. And um, same thing with the athletes. I mean, I know a lot of baseball players in the area, uh, but I, I don't know hardly anybody on the football teams. And, you know, uh, there's one young lady that Caroline played with that was on the basketball team at Loganville, the girls team. And, and she was a freshman who happened to play when Caroline was a senior, but there's been turnover, you know, and, so I, I don't know a lot of the players, um, but I was just like, Lord, you know, I, I just, I just, I just hope I'm, hope I'm making a, a, some connections in my, you know, my short term. That, and and um, you know, one of the things I'm getting to do um, that I haven't talked about, but through my conversations with people that came up through this process, is um, I sat down with uh, Todd Shelnut, who's the head baseball coach at George Walton Academy. He was a friend, and I've known him a long time. I was just sharing with him my story and. During our lunch one day, he he said, you know, I could really use some help coaching. And I said, really? And he said, yeah. And I said, I didn't come here for that conversation. I didn't wasn't expecting this to come up. What do you need help with? He said, 
need help with catchers. I was like, well, that's funny because I was a catcher, <laughs> you know. And you remember what Sabrina asked me what I would do if money wasn't an issue and one of the answers was coaching. And, and I, I never fathomed that this would happen. And, and so I'm getting to coach catchers on the varsity baseball team at, at George Walton. Anyway, on the ride home from uh, a baseball game, we were on the road, uh, a little bit of a drive. Um, one of the seniors gets on the bus after the game and he says, Coach, can I sit down and talk with you? And um, I said, yeah, man, have a seat. So that young man and I talked all the way home. And um, I'd been working to connect with this young man. And I learned that he was adopted from another country. Uh, that his, his mother went over and, and got him when he was a baby and brought him to the United States. And, um, you know, um, she's, she's worked real hard to, to raise this young man. And he's awesome. He's a great young man. But, um, you know, he has some goals and some things he's working on. And he was worried that they weren't going to come the way he wanted them to come or it was going to turn out the way he wanted it to turn out. And we just had a 30-minute conversation. And I was able to share my faith with this young man and my relationship with the Lord and uh, some of the experiences that I had had um, that, that kind of kept me grounded. And um, so I have to say, um, most recent, the conversation I had with, with this young man was, was, he said, okay, I'm, I, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be, you know? And um, so right now that's, that's one of, uh, one of the, one of the icings of the, on the cake, if you, if you will, that conversation I had with a baseball player just a few days ago. So, yeah. Well, and I think, too, I think, again, going back to our little prop, I think we are, you know, especially with guys, we're so we're so tangible. We're so visible. We have to see the things that are are changing, yeah. the things that we accomplish. And, um, right. and, I, and I get caught up in that a lot of the time. And it's so easy for us to, to constantly focus on the things that we feel like we've got some control over. But when it comes down to it, the investments that you're making right now, the athletes that you've influenced, the trips like going to the DR and these other places I've seen you uh, post trips to with FCA and other organizations, you know, other uh, missions and all. All of these are investments, not just for the, you know, for here on earth. It's the spiritual right. investment for eternity. And those are the things like those conversations. I keep letters that students write me, even if it's yeah. something kind of goofy. I've gotten to where I put them up on the wall and I had one student yeah. that I teach this year. He's a 10th grader and he's about six, threes, big muscular young man, about 16 years old. And he kind of come up the other day and he kind of put his signature on this little piece of paper and he threw it on my desk. And he says, uh, he calls me coach. Even though I don't coach anything anymore. He goes, Hey coach, he goes, uh, you might want to hang on to this. It's going to be worth something one day. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, all right, big dog, you know, like that. And I took it and um, I, I tacked it up on the wall. And then about yeah. three weeks later, he saw it. And he said, hey, coach, why you still got that thing on the wall? I said, well, you told me you were going to be famous. I'm like, I just got to make sure I don't lose it because I lose all of my, I, I lose everything that like matters, like marriage certificate. All, I'm the worst with filing. So I said, I want to make sure I have it. He goes, well, you know, I was just messing around. I said, well, bro, let me tell you something. I said, I'm not worried about financially like you becoming a millionaire and you, you know, being a, a professional athlete or whatever. I'm like, that's great. I'm like, right. but when I see you changing lives for the cause of Christ, because that's what I'm here to do is to influence you that that is the way to go. And if you respond to that and you answer God's calling for your life, that right there, no matter how much money you make or how little money you make, that right there is going to be an investment that not only have I made, but that Jesus yeah. Christ made on the cross for you. And that's what really matters. And I want to always look at that and remember this conversation because I want you to come back years later and tell me what you've been doing to serve the Lord. So, you know, again, those conversations, especially with young people, because they're honest. I mean, they'll just pour their hearts out to you when they trust you. And that is what really, really matters. Um, you kind of talked a little bit about this um, as we're kind of winding down here. Um, what are some projects that you're currently working on and maybe some things that you've got maybe coming up for the summer or uh, maybe even towards the end of the year? What are some what are some things that you're uh, actively well, are going to be working on very soon? So, so day to day, I'm just uh, working on, you know, continuing to uh, build uh, the relationships with folks in our community. In my business life, that's what served me well. Um, I've learned that relationships are everything. So day to day, I'm just working on you know, relationships. And we do that by just being present. Um, uh, there's lots of different ways to be present, but 
um, so that's that's the day to day. Um, uh, day to day, I'm working on sharpening myself, and just you know, being the best that I can be, um, and getting better and um, uh, growing in my knowledge. Um, but uh, down the road, you know, one of the things that FCA does is a number of things. But, you know, it's a sports ministry. So mm -hmm. um, uh, some of the things we do are we do camps. Um, we have uh, something called a power camp coming up this summer in May. Uh, power camp is for elementary age students um, and there's sports involved. Um, you know, and, and we share uh, uh, during the camp, we'll, we'll have some fun activities, sports related and then probably have music and then a message uh, we're always going to share the gospel um, those kind of things uh, so we have that coming up in may we have uh, a leadership camp for folks that will help us with our you know leading our huddles so one of the things fca does is, is huddles at the uh, school so i went to loganville middle this morning at 6 45 and they had the huddle before school it's think of it like a small group coach truesdale leads that and some other folks uh, other coaches there um but uh, they're probably, gosh, I had to say, probably 100 students there this morning. And, um, you know, they, they've got specific uh, folks. He told me a lot of seventh graders have been picked to be the leaders of the, and they'll, they'll break into little groups uh, on occasion and have their huddle time. Um, and so we'll have a camp specifically for, for upcoming leaders um, or for the leaders of the, the huddles that we have at the schools. Um, we have a captain's camp coming up in, I think, June. June. Uh, captain's camp are for captains or leaders of specific teams. So we'll ask coaches if you have somebody who's a leader on your team. Could be a quarterback, could be a linebacker, could be the point guard on the basketball team, could be the, uh, you know, it really whoever you see as your leader, um, FCA has a captain's camp uh, for, for those individuals. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I'll be doing, uh, and I can't wait because I, I, a lot of my buddies used to do this at FCA, but the, they have a football camp, they have sports camps. Hmm. Sports specific camps. There's a name it, uh, but there's a camp at West Georgia College for football, and um, football teams from all over the state of Georgia plug into this. Uh, what I'm being told is a lot of teams that end up plugging into this camp tend to be the ones that are playing for state championships. So um, I'm looking forward to being at West Georgia uh, in July, I believe it is. Uh, or June, yes, July, yeah, July 18th, I believe is, is what that is. Uh, so that's something we have going on. So my summer is is, is filling up fast, um, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be I'll be you know participating in a, in a lot of camps. Um, and I feel like um, you know that's really you know being in uh, being in that environment um, is really my zone. Um, mm -hmm. I'll give you some some other things. So. Um, during basketball season, Coach Zorn let me come sit on the bench with the team. My daughter played on that team. She played for Coach Zorn. I love Coach Zorn. Um, he let me be in the offices with, with office with him during the coaches' meetings, during the games, and they made it almost to the Final Four. And um, I was in there with him after they got beat in the final in the Elite Eight. And he was he was in a, you know feeling pretty bad because they lost and. Hopefully, was able to kind of say some encouraging words to him. I was in the locker room with the team. Same thing with Coach Grayson, the boys' basketball coach. Uh, I go to workouts with the football team. Uh, the coach over at Walnut Grove has, has let me come and speak with his team. Um, so I plan to continue to do those things. Um, you know, I, I, I go to workouts with the football team every Tuesday at Loganville, or every Monday and Tuesday, and I work out with them. And a young man walked up to me the other day and said, Coach, um, Oh, do you mind if I call you coach? And he's like, I mean, that's, that's, I love being called coach. Call me coach. And he wanted to ask me some tips on, on the lift he was doing, you know. And, um, but I feel like I'm, I'm the best, man, when I'm, when I'm in that environment. If I'm on the field, if I'm in the court, or I'm in the weight room, you know, that's, that's where I'm able to really connect. And so I guess part of my plan is to continue, you know, being present in those arenas. And, um, you know, Lord, the Lord – uh, gave me baseball when I was very young and um, I fell in love with sports and being around all that is sports and um, and so that's where I'm most confident and that's where um, you know the, the, the introvert comes out of me you know so 
uh, that's what I'll be doing here in the, in the near term and, and hopefully down the road. And, and, you know, I guess long term, um, you know, our, our goal is to grow our team here in Walton County. Um, and I hope to be part of that. I feel like one of my strengths is putting people or bringing people together um, and, and, you know, finding people and, and finding people to, to be on a team and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, uh, I think leadership is one of my strengths that I've sharpened over the years. And I, I'd like to see myself, you know, uh, you know, leading and helping helping FCA grow. Um, so that's that's the plan. I don't see myself saying I'm just holding on to our retirement. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and I, I like the fact that you're able to take those experiences and all the time that you spend in the business world, uh, you know, refining those leadership skills, growing a team, yep. as you mentioned before. And now you can do that in a spiritual sense, but you're also right. adding to the team. And, um, you know, having been there for nine years, I was never actively involved in FCA. I was never a sponsor, but I would always do what I could to encourage the young people to go attend, to make mm-hmm. sure that, those kids that were on fire for Jesus, you know, to let them know, Hey, you know, I, I got your back. I'm praying for you. Um, yes, just know, yeah. just know that what you're doing is not going in vain. And then hopefully they would be like, you know, okay, well, teachers are, you know, even though not, you know, students don't always want us to think that they care what we think they do. You know, they're always yeah. looking to teachers and coaches yeah. for that leadership and that guidance. Um, so just kind of to finish up, what are some ways that people can get in contact with you? Well, I appreciate you asking. Uh, I said earlier I met a short-term goal so I could go full-time and, and leave my business. Um, I do have a, um, I'm a little short still on being fully funded uh, with, the, with the goal that I, the big goal that I had set. Um, it was bigger than me. And um, so, uh, um, but I'm really, really close. So, um, if, if you're out there and you're listening to this and, and you weren't too bored with uh, the story, uh, I hope it's been encouraging. But um, uh, you could contact me in a couple of different ways. Um, uh, I know you're going to post, uh, I think, my web link. Um, mm-hmm. and, and there's a there's a link you can go to. Uh, you can send me an email. My email address is Jeff, J-E-F-F, Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S. So Jeff Hughes at FCA.org. Um and my cell phone number is 678-908-1244. If you want to follow me on uh, Instagram, I'm Coach Jeff. <laughs> I'm forgetting what that is here. Let me make, <laughs> I, I'm the same way when it comes to Instagram with the underscores and all that. So Yeah, I forgot how I set it up here. It's, it's uh, Coach J. Hughes 13 is mm-hmm. my Instagram. And I'm on Facebook at Jeff Hughes. Um, and I try to post what's going on. I use social media to kind of share what we're doing. My, my mentality on social media, if it's not positive, upbeat, motivational, or encouraging, I don't want to post it. But uh, like this morning, I, sh- I shared what we did at Little Little Little, uh, shared a few pictures, and, and I think I usually share the verse or a little message that we had for the day. Um, and so that's how I use social media. You can use, you, you can see what we're doing and keep up with us there. Um, but, you know, um, you know, my prayer has just been, Matt, that, that people would, that God would connect me to, to those that, you know, um, he'd like me to be connected with. And you know, you're, you're part of that group. And um, that's, I think while we're doing this today, um, it's part of part of answered prayer that we, you know, we, we stayed in contact. And, and we're doing this meeting today on, on the, on the uh, using technology. So, um, you know, if, if, if you're out there and you're listening to this and you'd like to help us, we'd be grateful. Um, and just reach out to me and we can tell you how. Absolutely. Well, listen, you were, I'll just let you know when this whole idea for a podcast came about, I have to go ahead and admit something. I actually, okay. I actually stole this idea from watching you give interviews with some of your former players. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I now, I will, that. No, I, I will tell you, that was one of the motivating factors that when I saw you giving those interviews and the interactions that you had with those young men and where they were and you were just, you know, finding out what they were doing, how they were serving the Lord. I'm being 100 percent honest when I tell you watching those interviews with a couple of those young men, you were one of those motivating factors. I said, you know, I've had this whole idea of wanting to share the gospel through the passion of creation. And at that time, I did not know you had already committed to FCA fully. 
Um, I knew you were more involved, but I was like, you know, I knew Jeff Hughes. I knew him whenever we were, uh, when I was going through teaching and he wasn't doing this. Obviously God's working in his heart. And I knew at least had an idea of where you were in terms of business. And I'm like, you know, so I just want you to know, brother, you were one of the top 10 people that I put on my list that I wanted to make sure I interviewed. And, um, you're just definitely an encouragement and a motivation to me. Um, you've always been that way, even when we weren't in direct communication from afar, the fact that you're willing to connect people, to go above and beyond, to build people up, but it's not about what you can get out of it. It's about what, you know, you can pour into them through the power of that Holy Spirit that you referenced earlier. So um, I just want you to know. What you say that. Yeah. Well, um, I, just, I want I mean, you to know I, that. I, I, I will say that uh, of many things that I've learned, buddy, is, is you know, serving others, you know, and, and I know, Lord knows, I can, I can get better. I, I see people, you know, who serve, you know, April McClendon is, she's, she's a tremendous uh, server. Um, I can name so many. My wife is, is great. I, I, you know, um, but, but, you know, serving others is, I think, um, you know, what it's all about and you know, giving. Uh, like I said earlier, you get so much more in return when you give. And yeah. So, um, you know, that's just kind of what I'm I'm doing to chase, you know, like like David, chasing after God's heart. And, um, you know, I, 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 I like the prayer that you said earlier, we're not worthy, I'm not worthy. Um, you know, Lord knows I, I, I need to continue to get better every day and, and I'm trying to do that. And, uh, you know, I, I want to close on this, but I don't mind, if you don't mind, I, I just hope that, you know, I like to say I'm a, I'm, I'm a different person than I was two and a half years ago, you know, and I hope people see that, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, I, I know that I'm, I've grown so much over the last couple of years, so I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for, for God, you know, trying to get my attention and, and um, you know, when I prayed the prayer, man, when you pray a prayer, if you, if you believe it in your heart, man, things will happen. And, Absolutely. um, you know, so, uh, I, I'm just, I'm just thankful that my wife, you know, said what she said to me and then the, you know, the door started opening and then, uh, I hope that this is encouraging to others. Um, you know, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that I've tried to, and why I wanted to share my story. Uh, if you just let God lead you, um, you won't just be hanging on, you know, and uh, like that guy said to me, I had a friend say to me at the gym the other day, he says, uh, you won the lotto, didn't you? He <laughs> said, you're doing what you love, I can tell. And, and he said, uh, you, would, you would do it if you weren't, even if you didn't get paid to do it. And I looked at him, I said, you're right on one thing. Um, I love what I'm doing and I would do it for free. Um, but I didn't win the lotto. Um, you know, the lotto is something that you, you just kind of look up and, you know, um, there's no real science behind it, right? There's no logic yeah. behind it. You, there's some random numbers that, you know, happen and, and you win the lotto. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot that's going into me becoming who I am today. And um, yeah. so it's not a lottery thing. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a God thing. So I thought I would just kind of close on that. <clears throat> yeah, it kind of reminds me this time of year, I tend to watch the movie Field of Dreams, which is one of my top movies oh, yeah. of all time. You know, when uh, Shoeless Joe, he says, man, I'd have played for nothing. You know, it's yeah. ser serving the Lord. It really, it really does give you that fulfillment in terms of thinking, you know, when Paul and these other apostles were being beaten and tortured and run out of cities and they would go back, you know, I heard one of, uh, you know, your former players, Cody Mixon, I heard him speaking the other day uh, online and I was listening to, to, to him sharing about that. And it is, it's just so true. It's like when you're doing what you feel like God's called you to do, um, there's no greater feeling and, and you really would, you just trust him that he's going to provide. So, um, yeah. folk, but folks, listen, Jeff Hughes, FCA, please go check out our link on creationandcompost.com. If you'll go to the link that says friends of CNC, we've already put a picture of he and his beautiful family there. And we've already put his email address. We're also going to attach a couple of extra links associated with his ministry, with what God is using him for. We do pray that you go check those out. We pray that you would pray, consider supporting them, praying that other folks would pour into this ministry so that not only can 
coaches and athletes, um, you know, be invested in as far as spiritual means, but that communities and ultimately our world would be influenced. So, brother, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for what you do, and I appreciate you being a guest. You're the man, Matt. Thank you, buddy. I've enjoyed it, and uh, it's been awesome. Absolutely. Well, well, let's stay in touch. Let us know what we can do, yeah. and uh, tell everybody we said hello, okay? I'll do it. All right, bro. We'll talk to you soon.